All right, so I'm doing a little uh, prep work here, uh, cleaning up these uh, 44 Magnum uh, cases. Uh, you can see they're by my hands, they're filthy. Uh, you know, typical revolver, just uh, kind of dirtier. Anyways, uh, I thought it was worth uh, doing a how-to video on this. There's a bunch of them out there, but uh, you know, I kind of like doing these videos. It's kind of fun, it gives me something to do. And uh, you know, 44 Magnum, uh, you want to take uh, care, right, uh, in reloading these guys because uh, they do have uh, uh, quite a bit of power uh, in these things. So, um, you know, care must be taken when reloading these. But uh, what I've got here is I've got a I've got the Lee uh, Precision uh, four. It's a four die set, forty four mag, forty four special. Uh, it comes with a decap die, a um, basically an expander a bullet seeder and a crimp die and you have to use all four so I see some of these sets that only have uh, three dies you have to buy oh, I think it's the crimp die that's, that's sometimes not included but you, you need it with a 44 Magnum because of the recoil um, you have to crimp so <clears throat> I mean unless you're gonna shoot you know 44 special maybe you don't have to crimp I don't know I'm not shooting 44 special um, the ch the press here you see this in all my videos this is a RCBS uh, Rock Chucker. Uh, it's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, and uh, I'm just depriming right now. So, pretty simple operation. Uh, I do put lube on these guys. You don't have to lube them. But uh, because it is a carbide die set, but uh, I do. And you can kind of see uh, the work that happens, uh, you know, from this die. It does resize it. Uh, so that's what I was going to say. Uh, it does resize. It does work the brass. So I, uh, I anneal the brass. If if you're going to work it at all, which we have to expand it and then crimp it. So you have to work it at least twice uh, at the uh, the neck here, even though it's straight wall, uh, I anneal. So I want it to last. From there, I just take this, you know, we're just loading pistol here. Take the... Uh, primer pocket tool clean this guy out he good enough you know doesn't have to be uh absolutely beautiful we're not going to be making any 500 yard shots on this guy so a little bit of lube and these guys up you know i'll uh i'll do all the deep priming and then go back clean up the primer pockets but just busting along here, getting them done. All right, I'll crank the rest of these guys out and then we'll do a quick clip on priming. All right, so got these guys cleaned up, uh, deprimed, got the pocket, uh, the primer pocket cleaned out. And now we're gonna prime them. So to do this with this press, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a feed tube uh, that's loaded with primers. And basically, you rock it rocks back. You pick up a primer, right? Raise the shell up. And I've got no, uh, you know, die in this thing. Right? Fits in the slot. Push the primer in. Primed. Ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'll tell you, over the years... I've had this thing for 25 years, maybe, I don't know, a long time, right, this press. I've, I've often considered, you know, replacing it, getting a new one, you know, all that. But honestly, I stopped short of buying anything because of, I, I don't know if it's just I'm used to this, the way that this one primes. Uh, I don't have to handle any of the primers. I don't have to do anything. I just do this, right? And I always stop short of buying a new press because I don't like the way other presses uh, handle the priming, right? I don't want to do it by hand because um, honestly, you, you know, when you're doing this for uh, rifles, right, you need to jam that thing in there uh, make sure it fits that pocket right. So, I don't know, maybe I'm old school, but uh, get these guys all uh, primed up and then we'll talk about uh, expanding the necks. Next step is to... Uh, 
do uh, the expander uh, step of this thing. So this is what the die looks like. Um, this is a, this die is kind of uh, made for a turret press. Uh, so you would put your, actually the RCBS fits in here too, but you'd put your powder uh, funnel in this guy, right? And then a, after you expand this thing or during, you know, once it's kind of pressed in there, uh, everything's lined up, then you would charge the case, right, for uh, a turret press. I don't have a turret press. And I'll be honest with you, with a single stage like this, uh, because I would have to, you know, I'd, I'd charge the thing and then I would put it back in the loading block. You don't want to do that, okay? Uh, anything that slops out or falls in, that you're going to, you know, you do not want to have cases laying around uh, that are charged without bullets on them uh, just because, you know, accuracy and safety uh, are at risk. So I do this with a single stage press. I do it one at a time. So uh, all I'll do is um, uh, basically just each case expand uh, the neck. Now, the setup on this guy is the, is kind of the critical one, right? This one and the um, the crimp die, because you can really you can really overdo it. Uh, we do not want to expand the necks on these guys so that they look like I don't know what you call it those old school shotguns like blunderbuss or what. This thing does not need to look like a trumpet. You just need to put enough, you know, expansion on it so that. A bullet will just sit on it squarely, right? That's it. Uh, you don't really need to get carried away with it. You're just blowing that out just a littlest bit so that uh, when you go to seat it, uh, it seats uh, smoothly. So that's it. That's the step. Pretty quick. Let's run these guys. And uh, expand them all. After that, we'll be charging and uh, seating bullets. So, stay tuned. Okay, uh, got the expander uh, work done. Time for powder charging. So, um, we're running the same thing uh, I did in the video. Uh, again, everything is going to be at 21.9 uh, grains of little gun. Uh, which, with a single stage press, I mean, let's be honest, this is the worst part of this. It's going to take uh, a little bit of time here. Um, but, eh, whatever, you know, we're having fun with it. I do these one at a time, just like this, just like I was reloading for a rifle. Right. Now I've got the, uh, I've got the uh, bullet seating die, uh, set to, uh, should put the top of the brass right on the candle or whatever it's called there. So we'll do a press here. Look at that. Pretty good. Voila. So, short of uh, running this guy through the crimp. Uh, hey, we're making 44 Magnum ammo. Pretty fun. Uh, this, uh, this 240 grain hollow point is an uh, excellent choice. So, I will uh, I'll continue to crank through... Uh, these guys and we'll set it up for the crimp you know getting the crimp set up uh, we don't want to uh, you know put any type of a lip or bump or anything on the side of these guys we just want to turn it in uh, to the can lower let's see uh, if this guy this should still be set up let's see what that looks like can see it's just got if you look at the shine right you can just see it's just you know kind of necked in there just a little bit to sit tight that's all you want it's all you want just enough to hold that thing steady from the recoil that's it so that is how you know you load 44 magnum uh, with a single stage press now I will say uh, if I had to do this uh, all the time for pistol loading, 
I don't do a lot of pistol loading, but if I had to, I, I would probably get a turret press. Um, this powder, throwing single uh, uh, powder charges uh, is annoying. That probably took me probably 10 minutes to load up 40 rounds. So if you, you know, if somebody was doing hundreds, it would be, it'd be an all day thing. It'd be, that'd be something else. Anyways, um, there you go. There you go. Uh, 44 Magnum kind of souped the nuts. So have fun. Be careful.